A third presentation is from uh, Dr. Lou Ballow. He's the scientific advisor and owner of AA Nanomedicine and Nanotechnology. And he's been providing scientific uh, guidance, feasibility assessment, technology due diligence in nanomedicine, nanobiotechnology, and nanotechnology for a very interesting set of clients, investors, private enterprises, government agencies, and he's been doing that for the last 15 uh, years. He's editor-in-chief of nanomedicine, uh, nanotechnology, bio, biology, and medicine, and uh, he has uh, worked at universities uh, around the U.S. and in Hungary. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Brown, for the kind introduction. Let me start with that nanoscale is an integral part of the word, but usually what we mean is only the man-made object. Not man-made objects, just like the previous uh, uh, examples. We're around all the time. We, never, we don't worry about them, so why? Why, why should we? This is, a size, this is a range in the range of materials that doesn't, uh, it exists for every material. It's horizontal. Everything could be a nano range. So, and size does not make any material dangerous. Lack of knowledge does. You can get hit by a bus. It's quite dangerous, no? Isn't it? Or saying that uh, anything that we just talked about is anything between uh, one meter and 100 meter has special properties. Mm, a couple of other things may be missing. To, to define that well. So let's uh, restrict ourselves to medicine and nanomedicine. What's the relation? So medicine is basically the study cycle. This is Wikipedia. Diagnosis, treatment, monitoring, prediction, and prevention of diseases. And uh, oftentimes it's a substance. Uh, and nanomedicine is not a separate discipline. It's medicine. It's where nanoscience and technology interact with life sciences and medicine to create uh, better devices, better drugs, protect life, restore health, enhance quality of life. So let's take a look at medicine. And the 20th century really took care of a, n a number of things, uh, very successfully, but also failed to, uh, to d take care of a, a, a number of things. The transfer of acute diseases into chronic diseases. Well, we are better off a little bit, but not perfect. There is always a way to go. They fail to cure, eradicate diseases, and is certainly moving towards the higher costs. So affordability will become a question. So the agenda for the 21st century is, is really uh, clear. Let's cure a few major diseases, eradicate specific diseases. Uh, that personality, and uh, let's try to apply it to a certain uh, group of patients or, indi or even individuals. So what do we know? That's what we do now. However, we didn't know, or maybe not everybody knows, that he has knee pain. So taking painkiller tablet, which uh, leads to kidney problems, ulcer and gastrointestinal, GI problems, and hypertension, and ultimately may lead to heart failure. And what's the reason? That the lack of disease like targeting, the traditional medicines we all take, it's everywhere. Distributed evenly by the bloodstream and it's present everywhere, even those take your, five, your knees ache, you take a painkiller, a traditional painkiller, acetaminophen, and most of it is in your liver. It's not in your knee, and it's not in your knee. So we, knew, we do know a lot of things, many, many, the knowledge, uh, community knowledge is enormous. But we pick a certain area and the traditional way to treat it, that's a clinical drug development, that choose a pathway, uh, figure out what small molecule should work, and then test and screen for toxicity, choose a standard excipient, and go to clinical trials, prove it. At first, a small group of patients, then a larger group of patients, then go public, sell, start selling it, and then we draw it in 10 years because it turns out that something is not really right. But thank you. 
So complexity of medicine is unavoidable. This is a scheme uh, eight years ago for EPCAM, that the molecular mechanisms of cancer. Anybody who, can, <coughs> who looks at it cannot believe it that it can be cured without taking one medicine. It's nonsense. So for monofunctional molecules, simple things that uh, have a, set, a small set of properties. It must be a combination of procedures, so multiple drugs, imaging, and therapy, and so on, in the case of cancer. It's, it's unavoidable. <clears throat> and then, because if it's not targeted, then it goes, every one of them goes every man, every one of them. So you take a, a, a second drug for the side effects of the first drug, and the third drug of the side effect of the second drug, and so on. So by the time you are 60, you end up with a, a pocket full or a handful of medicines you have to take every day, which is a great business. So nanomedicines can have unnecessary multifunction and complexity because they are simply larger. And then the combined bio with organic and, and synthetic and inorganic and everything what is necessary. However, we need to base it on the future of knowledge, knowledge of different areas, understanding the individual differences. Biomedical science, pharma science, all these things have to work together, and this is a huge amount of knowledge, so it's unavoidable to have uh, databases and data mining and figure out what takes what. Let me give you a first few examples. There are so many, <clears throat> and the most of them is uh, in a early stage. So, so that, that's how I should summarize that science is great, engineering is catching up, technologies are being developed, commercialization is slow, and business success is scarce. That about, the, what I mean, science is great. Let me give you a few examples. <clears throat> These are all uh, from uh, the journal. I used to be editor-in-chief for seven years. So there are nanoparticles uh, made, actually, it's uh, the Chinese Academy of Science, it inhibit cancer metastasis. It doesn't kill cancer. It injects it, it blocks. It, it separates, and there is no metastasis. 99% of the patients die from metastasis. So that's a, that's a huge step forward. Or another one, stimulate bone formation. A lot of people have serious issues, when, especially in older age, make their bones and I cannot. It's, it's just not forming very well. It is also, this thing also exists. It's, it's been uh, now in animal experiments have uh, proven completely. Functional regeneration of peripheral nerve injury. Uh, taking out a small part of a blood vessel and filling it with a, a special peptide and connecting the, the nerves one centimeter apart, they were, they were able to regenerate across and beyond this gap the functionality of the nerve. Uh, which is, again, itself just a functionality. Whether it is good or bad, you don't know. Uh, one more, peptide nanofiber as a carrier for tumoral delivery. There is something in the self-assembling. It's injected. It go anything that is not self-assembled, not assembled around the tumor, so well, that is goes away in a, in a few hours, not for weeks. And let me show you one <coughs> more uh, nano neuron knitting. That is a self-assembling peptide, which gets into an ionic fluid. It assembles into sheets, and that's. It's a physical conduct, it's not chemical, that the hearing immediately starts when, a, when it's applied. This is an insight to build nanostructure. If you don't believe me, watch the movie. So this is a liver, so that they're cut. It's a live animal, it's a surgery model, basically. Not too much sense to cut the liver of a rat, but it is for demonstration purposes only. So of course, it's full of blood. It's, uh, surgeries are very bloody. It's not easy for the surgeon to, to see, actually. You, always seen, you, you, you have, must have seen movies that are tampons and this and that and got, try to get away. It's a 1% of aqueous solution. It's like water. Fill it in, it self-assembles, and now you have a clean surface. You actually can see what are you doing. Would it make a great difference? Absolutely. Where is it now? 
it's a it's a startup company, and I'm not going to tell you which one. It's not a business. So engineering and technology are upcoming. What do I mean? This is an existing <coughs> existing uh, technology detecting lung cancer biomarkers. Thank you. That is uh, most. People, especially in the world, those part of the world when people smoke heavily, 90% uh, of the patients gets to the clinic when it's already too late. But how to, how to uh, they, they are not going to come to you. So uh, uh, one of the scientists created a, a small device when actually you breathe in like a breathalyzer and it tells you whether you are in danger or not. And this is the proof. It's a simulated breath, a healthy and cancerous breath, because cancer changes, the lung cancer changes the, the processes in your lung. The, the composition of uh, the breath you are exhaling it changes, but it's not just one. There's no, no one magic, right? It's, it's a many, many things today. So where is nanopharma today? That's what I meant, that if business is, is uh, of course, and that the clinical one tires, there are hundreds of 10,000 of great invention in science. There's no problem of that. Now, clinical trials, there are 1,000 in clinical one. The success rate is about 30%. Clinical two, there are hundreds. But the success rate, interestingly, lower. But it's a lower, lower proportion. And clinical three, about 300. These are, uh, these are uh, cancer drugs, what I'm showing. It's not every just cancer drugs. And about the final success rate is about 2 to 3 percent. There are less than 50 are uh, in uh, the uh, various areas in these, or uh, approved at least. <clears throat> if you look at the key technologies, uh, certainly lead the carriers and drugs are leading, but, uh, but nanomedicine is not drugs. That's just one part. There is a prevention, again, and then all those uh, uh, others. And let's not forget that by reaching the hilltop might make you famous. The soil is more fertile between the mountains of scientific knowledge. So that's what interdisciplinarity is very, very important. Thank you for your attention.